Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another Last Epoch dev stream. As usual, I'm your host, Mike. Hi, it's me. Hello. How's it going, everybody? Oh, oh yeah. A little stretch in. Let's play some Last Epoch. Let's have some fun. Welcome to the stream, everybody. If this is your first time here, glad to have you with us. If you're returning, you may notice my camera looks a little different because I witnessed what I think may be one of the first spontaneous acts of robot on robot violence. I'm just kidding. My uh, standing desk decided to keep going up even though I was telling it to go down and it crushed my camera mount and ring light into my ceiling and just shattered all of it. So I'm on... Uh, Temporary new, um, or temporary old stuff that I will be, um, fixing up for future streams, I hope. <laughs> and I also, uh, I played a little bit of my, I'm leveling, leveling the same Lich still, but played a little bit last night, and, uh, we're now, we're now full melee, we've switched our build completely. I love it. Day and night better. It's crazy. Also, uh, oh, you got subs already. Well, thank you very much. Trunks, 19814. Thanks for the sub. Three months in a row. Glad to have you with us. I do kind of have to <laughs> pay attention because Reperform runs out if I don't keep rolling. Uh. If this is your, uh, I guess if it's anyone's first time or last time here, who knows, but, um, if you have a question for me, I'd be happy to answer it, preferably about Last Epoch. Please put at Last Epoch Game in the question so you know you're looking for me to answer it. We'll have some fun. I've really been enjoying this, uh, this event. A few of my friends who haven't played much, uh, or were, like, waiting for a good chance to get in and play have, have, um been been playing during this event and it's been it's been really cool to watch and see their process and uh attacking the game for the first time and so i've been really enjoying that so much of my damage comes from applying bone curse that like if i don't apply it it's so many hits but if i do apply it it's just one hit and everything's dead <laughs> Following, we're gonna follow a little bit of a build here. See if I can find it. Did I? Did I? <laughs> oh, I didn't save it. That's funny. We'll find it really quick. Here it is. Final ones there. Okay, we got this. We got this. No problem. We're doing the just slap points in, uh, and we're not worrying about the order right now. Which, which you know, might come back to bite us a little bit, but that's okay. We've got our first question here. Hello, Legion Shield. Is there any chance in the future to see more skills that possess the mobs, like how Hungering Souls do? Uh, yeah, I think so. Possess is, um, it's it's like a, an ailment, just like any other. Um, there are. When you, when you have ailments that have unique modifications in a specific tree, it's tricky to have it appear in too many places. It's not performant. Um, so you'll quite often see things that are like Bone Curse, for example, is a perfect example I'm using right now. Bone Curse has a lot of uh, ways to change it in its skill tree. 
Um, and it's not very performant to do that when there are um, many other sources from other players of that same ailment. So, um, like, you know, you can get away with it when it's just when it's just a few a uh, few sources because you basically have to be every player would have to be playing a bone curse class like a, an acolyte that's playing bone curse that's a pretty narrow set of acolytes that are that are actually using this specific curse right like there's some some lich stuff and some warlock stuff and some necromancer stuff but like they're all really specific versions of those things um and so the like if everyone has their own version it does work but it's really rare to have it's actually with, with bone curse it's impossible to have multiple sources of bone curse from multiple players simultaneously so you like to have um so many different versions of it at the same time doesn't doesn't happen um so this is this is why we don't have major changes in skill trees to the actual ailments themselves for really common ailments like ignite for example or bleed because there's like every class and its minion can produce bleed um and when, when it's coming from so many different sources it's actually a big problem performance wise so um yeah possess is one of those things that we could see more skills that affect it um i'd say it's unlikely too too many maybe what maybe one more but it would still be on acolyte which i know is i think is what you asked for anyways more skills yeah so yeah it's it's possible that it could show up more um, but it would probably still be on Acolyte. Um, they'd probably be on similar build, that sort of thing. It's a cool set piece. I don't think I've noticed that for a while. <laughs> a little spike trap, glowing. All right. A while back, you showed an update of a higher polyed Osprex model. What percentage of the likelihood that we can see an Osprex as a new playable class? Um, I'd put it in the not impossible category. Um, but not actively being um, pursued at the moment. But yeah, I think there's, it, it's 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 tricky because so if we say we release an Osprex class, then there's um like, are we introducing an Osprex as a race alternative to every class that's playable, or are we introducing Osprex as a um as a specific class like the Osprex class, or like make a class that happens to be an Osprex that sort of thing. So then there's this very heavy theming that gets tied to that class. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we need to do like more masteries first before we do something like that or what, but there's like, there's there's a little bit of, uh, gotta make sure that's, that's done right. Next question. Any news about the progress and maybe a timeline about performance improvements? I mean, so yeah, every major patch always comes with performance improvements. Um, we continue to do that. So every patch will have them. Uh, next patch will have them. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, come on. Reperform, save me! Double tap to a mistake. Whew, 
That was close. <laughs> that was that was tight. That was that was a very tight fight. Forgive me. Uh, yeah, performance improvements. Yeah, always always on the table. It's the only thing that's more important than performance improvements are um, multiplayer performance improvements and multiplayer uh, everything. <laughs> Are we gonna... Yeah, let's go find that. We might be a little over-leveled for this area, but I wanted to come back and finish off the quest and the campaign and do some of my side quests, because I'm still low on idle slots. Really need a new weapon badly. Quite, quite badly. Alright, more questions. Instead of just ask, uh, taking out the new event shrines, which we're not doing. Okay. <laughs> um, can we have a community poll on the forum asking if we should keep them until we start the cycle? No! Because we can just keep them? <laughs> I don't think those are part of the event. I'm pretty sure those are just part of the game now, aren't they? Did I, did I miss something? Can I double check now? <laughs> but yeah, the um, the lizard, the loot lizards, and the shrines are just part of the game. I'm, I think, as far uh, I'm kind of like second guessing myself now. Right? Who's on that? I can just ask. Let's, let's double check. Let's make sure. I'm wondering poison skill versions of the rogue to be tuned at will be tuned at some point. Question mark. Uh, I believe. Uh, I mean, bleed build is a lot easier to create and sustain. I mean, yeah, we're always looking at balance, so um, we want we want those. Uh, uh, those those core fantasies to be available at, at high tier. Let's jump over here. Hey Mike, will we see some new MTX before the release of 1.2? Uh, I mean, other than stuff coming at the end of this event, I don't know. I'm gonna say low, but maybe low, low chance, but maybe chance. Yes, the shrines, the loot. I got double, I got confirmation. The loot lizards and the shrines are auto permanent, so you don't have to advocate for that. It's just happening. Yes. Look at those idle slots. Oh, look at those idle slots. <laughs> you look good. Get our... Two, three, one, this way, three. What are we doing here? Down this way? Okay, down that way sounds good. This way? Okay. And last but not least, we're going up this way. 
Jump up there, guys. Just jump right to the waypoint. That's really the big thing I want is the shrine quests. Which we are looking at some alternate ways of uh, unlocking that. That I think will be really good. So it seems as if part of the build puzzle always includes sustainability. Uh, will we ever see an affix or item that lets us leech a portion of damage as mana? Um, so, so the way the way you've asked this question, extremely unlikely, like super duper low chance. I, I hate I hate being like no never because you know ever's a long time and the game changes as, as we go. With the state that it's in right now, there's no intention of adding an affix like that. No. Um, As soon as we do, as soon as we add that as a generic affix that can just like go on stuff, um, or like as a, as an item that's not restricted at all, it's just like it's just ever anyone can use like as as an amulet that just has that on it or something like that, or like you know like a dual leech ring or something like that. As soon as we do that, we have to completely rebalance every ability in the game that has a high mana cost. Um, To, to, to have a cooldown. We have to, we have to, we have to add a ton of cooldowns to abilities in the game. Like, suddenly Glacier needs a gigantic cooldown, you know? Um, and... It's really something we're trying to avoid doing. It's it's not like a, a, a hard no, never gonna happen, but like... it It's a really... It creates a... It creates a very big problem that we very intentionally built the entire rest of the game around not having. Um... So it's 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 difficult to justify. There has to be like a really important reason to have it, um, and it's it is a little bit of a different mindset in, in these abilities that are balanced around um, their mana cost and your ability to regenerate mana than they are around a cooldown. And a lot of that is is great in that uh, you don't have you're not sitting there waiting on a cooldown. You're you're dealing with a combat puzzle in that you are balancing around mana um which i think is a really positive thing um but if you're if you're used to um being able to to like get mana leech and where you can create mana to be a situation where mana is no longer an issue in a build um there might be something that you're kind of hunting for uh, so it has a little bit of a different feel than um games that do have it It's in the off chance it's poison, I'm waiting. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a cool thing to... I have a lot of mobility already on this build. Hmm. Oh. All right, next question. Uh, it's the unique Stygian Coal item for the Lich working as intended. I am not sure. Uh, if you think you found a bug with it, please use the in-game bug reporting tool. It's just this easy. Boom, there you go. Um... Even if you're not sure, even if you're like, I think I might have found a bug, but I don't know if it's a bug. Just report it as a bug. Because even if it's not a bug, um, it means that the communication that we're giving to players about what it does isn't good enough. Which is a bug. So, like, the fact that you think it might be a bug makes it a bug. It's like uh, saying that's remarkable. It's always true. It's a self-fulfilling statement. You know? So, yeah, it's... Kind of always just just default to make the bug report, please. I've seen it in quite a few builds though, so it's got to be at least doing something good. <laughs> All right, is Flayer's Pride and reduced health cost affixes supposed to work with nodes like Blood Tithe in Chaos Bolts, or is consumption different than cost? 
Um, consumption is different than cost. So if there's, so the, like this, this has a, like a health cost associated with it. Yeah, that does sound like it would, it should work though. Let's, let's take a look. We can actually open that right here. Uh, what was it called? Blood tithe. Yeah, I mean, it's got different wording that makes it be like, oh, it's not a cost, it's a consumption. But yeah, that does feel like a cost. The way that it, the way that it is happening, because it is a direct cast, and... I... I... Mm. I think it's probably intentional that it doesn't work, but I think it probably should. You can look and see what that one was. Is that upheaval? Yeah, it's upheaval. Nice. Where are we going? Not up here. All right. More questions. Are you still considering was the movement? Would it be? Re would it required new animations? Yeah, it's still something that's being considered. It does require new animations. Um. Yeah, it requires a, a ton of new animations all over the place. It's one of the most unassuming features. Where you're like, it's easy to slap that in. Like, it's the same thing that's happening when you click over here. Or if you just, like, tell your character to move in that direction. You can just, like, put clicks in those spots. Like, it's super easy. And, and, then, uh, and then you drill a little deeper and it's like... Oh my goodness. To make it actually look and feel and play good, it is humongous difference. Because I do think it would be cool. I do think it would be uh, a good thing to have in the game overall. Um... There's just, there's a lot of things that need, like it needs, it needs, the game needs rebalancing around it if we add it. That's the thing. And it also creates a lot of tech debt too, because, um, more control schemes means every time you add a new ability, every time you, like, change major things about how you control your character, uh, you have to, you have to take that into account when you're making new things that interact with how you control your character. So just, just like having a controller um version of the like controller support at all it, it already does this then we add WASD and it, it adds it again we're adding an extra layer every time we make a new ability we have to like figure out how does it work with each control scheme um and it restricts some of the abilities you can make where you're like oh, i really want to make this ability but you're like okay well that control scheme it just won't work with or this control scheme it'll just be like crazy overpowered with and it's it's it, it gives you a few restrictions which isn't always a bad thing um but you know it's I'll, I'll say it's a frustrating thing a lot of the time. Zip through here a little bit. Did I go the wrong way? I think I went the wrong way. I don't do the campaign enough to... to actually know every zone properly. Oh, let's see what the shrine is. That's why I came up here was for the shrine. I could feel it. Oh! Auto harvest! Yes! <laughs> okay, just get to the enemies. We're over halfway down our auto harvesting. No. I mean, it's amazing, but get there. <laughs> it 
Start it! Ah, oh, it started when it was there. Ah. Oh. It was still sweet. <laughs> we'll take it. All right. Uh, for example, in PoE, when there is a new expansion and new skill gems are introduced, it brings a ton of hype to the game. Do you think it would be applicable to the last epoch to have a similar approach and hype to new cycles? I mean, yeah, it's. We I. Yeah. I uh, really love loot lizards. Awesome, me too. <laughs> I think I just let one escape a second ago. That's okay. Uh, I was wondering if are the spawn rates and frequency uh, at all intended to be slowed down to progress in the monolith? Uh, it seems like when the player pushes fast to the end of the mono, more lizards spawn. Um, when you are in higher corruption, more lizards do spawn. And like, uh, specifically better lizards spawn as well. Uh, do you keep track of infographic type stats? Like the skellies from uh, people playing in offline mode. Um, we do in like, when you're playing with on the live client in, when you're playing an offline character on the live client, yes. Um, but if you boot the game in Steam in like offline mode, um, where like the entire client is booted up in offline mode, um, the game never calls to the internet for anything. So there's no way for us to track that at all. I love having like like the shift and reap and teleport or, and transplant. I was playing with my buddy who hasn't played a, an acolyte yet. Uh, just a couple days ago, <laughs> he he saw me use transplant. My body exploded, and he's like, "Oh my god, did you just explode and die?" <laughs> nice. I'm I'm glad that's what it looked like because that's what happened. <laughs> just not the dying part. Uh, da, 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 da. Will we be seeing any famous voice actors in the upcoming chapters of the game? Oh, I would love to get some get some uh, some like well known voice actors in the game. I think that'd be amazing. Um, that would that would be really cool. I hadn't thought of that before. I don't I don't think they have anyone uh, like that lined up. It's uh, it's that's one of those things that's probably not super cheap to do. Um, probably worth it though. I don't know. I'd love to. It'd be super cool. Really enjoying this skip build. I'm having a tough time uh, remembering to look at chat for questions because uh, I'm actually just enjoying playing this. This happens a lot, though. Gotta stop enjoying the game, Mike. Come on, answer questions. Jeez. <laughs> uh, is there any thoughts on somehow making the common glyphs, runes, affixes useful? Maybe like being able to trade a hundred commons for one random rare. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been talking about having a um a, a, a glyph a, a crafting materials vendor that's a good way to put it a crafting mats vendor um on like at a loss so you'd you'd have um like some limited 
I, I, I don't I don't know exactly what the loss ratio would be, but there there have to be some sort of like, um, like not just trade one to one, because then as soon as you trade one to one, every shard is every shard. Uh, it's just bad. But yeah, I think I think having some sort of like, um, oh they'll they'll buy. I don't know, like, they'll, 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 you can exchange any, I, I, I don't know what it would look like at all, but something along the lines of, you can exchange, say, like, 10 strength glyphs for an intelligence glyph, or something like that. I don't know if there's, like, fixed recipes, or, like, uh, you put in, like, like, uh, a, a two health, two types of health shards, you get in a hybrid health shard. Uh, it might be getting too, I think that's probably getting too granular. Um... I'm not sure the best way to do it, but yeah, there's 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 definitely room for stuff like that in there. Yeah, that's stay out of that. Get that damage in. Yes. I'm definitely not crazy over leveled for this, I swear. Let me get my passives and uh, idle slots here. <laughs> we, could, we could hop over to the. I think that's, that's enough idle slots. I could hop over to the uh, the monolith probably. I get my passives. Uh, some more passive rewards too. Should I go back? Oh, two passive points. Let's go grab them really quick. <laughs> more questions, Mike. More questions. Uh, is there any thoughts on? Oh, I already answered that. Is there a specific reason ice bugs were chosen as shrine minions and not fire bugs? We had an ice bug model ready to go. That's that's really it. What is the blue effect around some monsters? It looks like spinning blue string. Didn't see it before patch 1.1. 1 .1. Um, it could be a, like a magical indicator, like only only for for magic enemies that have like uh, a property. Could be that. All right, Moxjet mentioned that you made an internal optimization team. Is there any progress that you can talk about? Can we expect something next cycle? Yeah, I mean, there's n nothing specific. It's it's a lot of boring stuff. It's a lot of, um, like optimization is not flashy at all. We're constantly doing it. There's always people working on it. Um, you know, it, it improves every single patch, and we're going to continue to work on it every single patch. It's a major, 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 major thing that we are working on always. Um, and it's only thing that beats it out priority-wise is multiplayer stability and performance. I know I say that every time, but uh, can't really get any more than that. Alright. Hi, I'm a COF player for life. Any plans in store to give us use tons of unused uniques that drop? Yeah, this is a tricky one. So on one hand, um, it does kind of suck to have uh, uniques that go unused and they, they drop and you're kind of like, ah, leave them behind, that sort of thing. And it's like, wow, with nothing to do with them. Um, it would be kind of nice to have a way to um, have, have some sort of system that takes them and uses them to do something. Uh, whether that's like, like in a lot of other games that includes usually like a crafting material system where there's like 
uh, you, you you break them down, and you get like an exalted. Uh, exalted is a bad, bad word for it, but you get like uh, an, an orange crafting mat, and then you can use those in uh, high level crafting recipes, that sort of thing. Suddenly, every single unique item that drops becomes worthwhile to pick up. Um, and so you're kind of you're kind of stuck with two solutions at that point. One, drop way fewer unique items, um, which. <laughs> I, I doubt would be everyone's first choice or you have to um, uh, you have to like I guess there's a few options you can make the value of that such that it only is worthwhile picking up like rare versions of it so it's like you're, you're at the same issue still you're picking up slightly more things but not everything and you still have a similar issue um, you can also then try to uh, make it be a uh, like a field operation so you don't have to go back to camp to um, to do the, the the breaking down process so you can do it in the in the field and it's just it's it's another it's another one of these things it's another like okay you got a unique let me let me open my craft materials and let's let's grab an item and let's use it on it and okay it breaks it down right let's keep going and it breaks up that flow oh my goodness and it breaks up that flow quite a bit uh, when, when you have when you have such large um, like important things to do with uh, your extra time there don't think we're actually good enough to go do black sun or not we're going to just try this one so it's the, yeah there's this there's this balance of we don't want you to pick up too many things um, cause then you have to go do something with them and we don't want you to leave behind too many things cause it feels bad leaving behind these big shining glowing things on the ground. Um, and I don't think there's a, I don't think I've seen a good solution for this issue yet. Um, but you know, could they, they can come along out of nowhere sometimes. Uh, where's this go? Should we go five? Yeah, the mana cost doesn't scale. Up here, yeah, we do want that. Yeah. And harvest. Three, five, march change. Yeah, let's just crank that up. All right, bit of a tree going already. Let's see what's out there. More questions, more questions. Uh, what is your view on the Wilhelm screen sound effects? Would you ever put the screen into the game, altered, modified, or unmodified? Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, um, every time someone falls from a great height or something happens where someone's like dying off screen or uh you know there's like there's like a, a a bad a random random bad guy seven is dying by falling off of a cliff into the snowy mountains um the wilhelm scream is used as uh the sound effects for that it's in probably more movies than any other sound effects that it's ever been made um and i'm basing that off literally zero research just my assumption um, if you grew up in the 90s, you have, you, you've heard it hundreds of times, probably. Um, and it's, it's a pretty, it's, it's like a guy screaming, it's pretty high-pitched, it's like a, like a, ah! type screen. Um, and it's, it's great. Uh, I, I would love to slip it in the game somewhere as a nod to it, uh, but it would have to be, like, intentional and, like, obvious that it's intentional. Um, it would have to feel like um, we we did it as as the joke type thing. I think I, I'd want I'd want I think unaltered would be best because if you're if you're if you're putting a lampshade on it, you want it to be obvious. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, our damage output is not amazing. Yeah, we are surviving, which is decent. Alright, as the next big update is a combination of two cycles, can we expect a bit marketing campaign lead up to it help with the hype? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is gonna be our first big marketing push since 1.0. Um So yeah, you'll see you'll see a lot more uh marketing and hype around 1.2 than you did 1.1. And, and the refresh as well. Are you aiming for a decent skill balance for 1.2? I mean, we're always, yes, always. Nothing to do with 1.2 in particular, just that's what we always look for, right? I'll read the rest of that question, because there's more to it. But I am having to... Uh Make sure I don't die here. That up duration on the bone curse swings on melee attacks it makes it really nice. All right, are you aiming for a decent skill balance for 1.2, uh, where we won't have half the de half the game skills doing 10, 20 less damage than the top 15 skills? Yeah, I mean, so there's always going to be skills that are more powerful than others. That's always going to happen. Um, and with the gigantic skill trees and the variants there, there's always going to be versions of those skills that are better and worse, right? Like that's just that's just going to happen. Um, I think we've uh, I think if you look at the trend since one point, even since before that, um, there's a very significant uh, narrowing that's happened in the in the lowest low to the highest high of ability damages, and the number of skills that fit in that middle range is 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 going up in a good way. And we don't want them to always be like if if everything's equal, it's just boring, right? Because if if you're in a situation where it's perfectly balanced. And you're like, okay, great. Uh, it doesn't matter what I pick. I'm gonna do the same amount of damage. That's 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 not fun. That defeats like the whole purpose of half of the game's draw, which is you know making a build and um, trying to make it do as much damage as possible and all that sort of stuff. So like we we aren't interested in perfect balance, which I know sounds possibly weird and unintuitive, but that's where we we're at. I need more damage. I can hardly see what's going on here. It helps a little bit. Thank you very much, someone! I will inspect that in a moment. We got through that. I should put my idols on. I just realized I never put the idols on. <laughs> okay, Nemesis! Here we go. Ah, uh, one LP. Not bad. Yeah, we might be able to take the attunement out of that or something. I don't know. Oh, that may have been a mistake. Reperform comes up and suddenly my damage is like triples. <laughs> We'll take it. Oh, also, any regular shield will be very proud of me. Uh, because I have actually managed uh, a decent amount of auto sorting on my stuff. Yeah, Mike's doing his stash right this time. <laughs> oh, I should do that. <laughs> like exactly, I'm like, I should, I gotta find some leech somewhere in one of these. <laughs> it's 
right there for me. Okay, two, three, three, two, one. Three is good. One down here. What's this? Additional detonations at arrival. All right. Yeah, he's on release. We like that. Uh, coming down here, I think. Yeah, extra damage to cursed. How's our curse looking? More chills? I got chills. They're multiplying. And I'm losing control. Okay. I'll stop singing. I know it's terrible. Back to questions. Is there any plans on letting players reset a legendary item so it can be crafted on a gain? And maybe some crafting material to disable a stat on an exalted item so it can't be transferred to get better odds COF item? Um, I think there's a lot of really good concerns in there in your question. Um, we talked about having a way to revert a legendary item to its unique state recently, very recently actually. Um, and decided against it. So we don't have plans for uh, for adding a way to take a legendary and basically strip everything off it so it can be used again. Um, I do think it brings up a good issue though. And um, it's kind of the uh, what's what's the, what's the core here that so uh, and I always, I always try and and, and uh, talk about this stuff without directly referencing. Um, uh, uh, Diablo 2 too much because that's just where all of this goes for me um, but <laughs> we're going to reference Diablo 2 a little bit here it's kind of a, a, a joke in that um, you know like one of the highest variant items for rune words so, so this is okay it's kind of like creating a rune word Make, making a legendary is kind of like creating a rune, rune word you have these multiple very rare components that you slap together uh, and it creates a really powerful item out of that but it's not guaranteed to be there's there's a range in in how powerful that item is so sometimes it's more powerful than others it's possible that you can um you can make a um uh, uh, an exalted or exalted a rune word that is actually worth less than the its components um, and in that case, there actually is a way to take an item and put it back to its original state where you can rip the components out. You put a hell rune and a, um, and a, and a temp temporal scroll into the Heradrix cube and it, um, you can watch this one right there, right there, the Heradrix cube. Um, anyways, and it, it, it takes you back to where it was. It, you just get the, uh, the base item out with the sockets in it. Now, the value of it's almost never worth it. Like you're making uh, like a spirit, you're trying to make a perfect spirit shield, and it makes a lot of sense because the four socket monarchs actually the expensive part of that operation, and not the Talthal Lord Am, which are super duper cheap runes. Um, so you can, uh, it's it's rare that you actually use that that situation because most of the time the expensive part of it is the runes you're putting in. And it's kind of like you 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 make this way, where this is all going. And I'll get there, I promise. You're making call to arms. Um, it's got it's got a couple medium high runes in it, um, and it has a very very high variance in uh, what comes out of it. And so you make you make a call to arms, and the rolls are terrible, and you're like, great, I just wasted everything. It's it's like almost it's not worse than before but like it's technically better but like it's so bad that it's like not even worth using um which is kind of a similar feel that that i think people have with making um sometimes they make legendary items in last epoch because the um so much more of the cost is pushed towards the base item it makes it even more uh enticing to be able to um like take away or, or to, to undo that process. You know, like uh, like a bad CTA is better than no CTA, right? Like a bad a bad roll legendary is better than a non roll legendary most of the time, unless the base has such high uh, variance in it that you can actually get worse legendary versions than a base unique version if you've 
made a legendary out of a very high variant base that has a very low roll on the ver legendary version, a high roll on the base version. I think that was alright. Um, I know I'm rambling here a lot, I'm sorry. I'm getting to the point, I swear. Um, I don't think that our... I think because our system is skewed so much more into the value of the unique item itself when uh when, when you make a legendary that i think it is probably not going to be worth it's it's there's not gonna be a situation where we can cleanly make um legendaries revert themselves if we did i think it would have to happen immediately and that's the only way it can even be considered is it's like uh like you've made it and instead of accepting the item that was just given to you you actually have to reject it right then i think that would be the only way it could even be considered and even then we're not interested in doing that right now um that was an extremely long-winded answer I hope you had some good insight there. Ooh, double purple lizard. Okay, yeah. I'm like, I forgot I was in read perform for a second there. We are just going to grab these things. Oh my goodness. I need I need CDR to make sure Reaper uh, comes back up faster. Whew. All right. Oh, that was, was, was an intense fight there. <laughs> Take a little breather. Uh, as for disabling stats on exalted items so it can't be transferred, I think there's I think there's more room in that. Um, personally, I think there's more room there to do things. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you do it. Maybe something along the lines of forced to take. Uh, like forced to take specific, like it, you have it has to take at least one prefix. Um, or it has to take at least one suffix type situation. Um, you know, or maybe, maybe, I, I, not, all, all, all this is hypothetical and, and not approved by the design team at all. But like, if you were gonna make a suggestion in the suggestions forums, I would I would focus it around the second half of that, trying to find different ways to make the to improve the odds of getting the one you're looking for uh, through gameplay actions. So like, um, maybe like uh, a a dummy affix that can go on an item so it never gets chosen. So it's like, oh, if this if this affix is on your on your item, it can never be brought over to it to a, a um, to a legendary. So it count it takes up that fourth spot, but it never gets transferred. Something like that. Um, I I think that would be the more that, that that's the way I would I would attack the situation myself. I don't, I don't know if we can do that, but <laughs> did I not? <laughs> that one little enemy just they, like didn't spawn. That's funny. Noise. Tons of stuff. We're gonna look through this all later. But you know what I did just realize? We 
I wonder why it's opening to this one. Because I it was always opening to this one. I thought this was my first one, but it switched to this one. It's weird. It's supposed to be the first one you ever had. Ever. Crit and more crit. Mmm. I like crit. Let's get let's let's just get some crit in there. I know it's crit and minion crit, but you know, we'll just take crit and crit. And be happy with it. Vitality Fizz res, like great for us. Our resistances are actually vitality's not bad, but poison and fire. Uh do, 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 do. fire? Do, do, do. I'll take you to burn. Do, do, do. Hell fire. Armor fire res, good enough. If anyone knows that song I was singing? Like a hundred points. And also, uh, how's your back? <laughs> All right, coming down here. Yeah, we're coming down there. All right. Do we have more passives? Do we get more passives? No, no more passives. I want more passives. Oh, the passives for Mike. Uh, let's go here. Sounds like fun. Hey Mike, hi, how's it going? I'm working on a last Epoch inspired AI album. Uh, <laughs> single beard like hair will be on it. Love it. I'm currently working, always watching the Muffin Man story. <laughs> Any other EHG insider info for me? Oh man. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, There's so, the, yes, there there are things, but I'm kind of like, uh, is that is that shareable? I don't know. Um, let me think about. It. Ask me, ask me in like acid devs or something, and I'll uh, I'll I'll have a think about it and give you give you a proper answer there. So I quite I did I did quite enjoy that beard like hair song. That was this good. I actually almost went looking for it the other day. By the other day I mean yesterday. Uh do you have any plans to do something with blue or white items? Because now it feels like they are not important in the late game. Yeah, I agree. Um that was that is one of the things that was really magical. I know I always bring it back to D2, but that was one of the things that was really magical about Diablo 2's magic items. Um is that th there was a space for them in the end game. Like some of the best gloves ever made, one of the best dueling shields ever made in that game. They're, they're all they're magic items. Um, and you know, it's the it's the fact that you can't take a magic item and turn it into a rare item with with those same stats that makes it possible to have that relationship where individual stats can roll higher on magic items than they can on rares. Um, and, and that's really the, 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 the most important part of that entire relationship that causes that make, that makes that to possible is that, um, lack of relationship between magic and rare items. Um, so it's, it's very tricky for us to do. We can we knew going into, uh, making this crafting system, that this would be an issue going forward. That was like one of the things we we looked at at the very start. We we're like, well, this is great, but you know, we, we that that's that's been a known a known issue for a long time. Uh, none of these are really leaning my way. I'm gonna challenge us now. But yeah, there there was, for, I don't know if it was still in the game, but there was for a while um, a, a low chance that uh, white items can actually roll the most forging potential of any item in the game. Um, 
and you just get this like white item with insane fortune potential. I think there's probably room for some sort of like alternate mechanic, kind of like on the same vibe as like Nemesis system type thing, or maybe more along the lines of the uh, um, legendary crafting system at the end of a dungeon. You know, something along those lines where you are. Um, where, where you are, like, doing that craft. Um, like, 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 where, where the, you have to bring a blue or white item, probably have to be a white item, where, where you're bringing a white item to this crafting system or this reward system, um, and something's happening from it directly. I can see that. It's tricky because we've long held that exalted items are purely, strictly uh, non-craftable. And so if you have something that's like a, hey, um, it, it makes white items useful, you kind of have to have a way to turn that white item into an exalted item for it to really be super useful, right? Um, and we don't, we don't have that no, or plans for that right now. Chaos! Chaos bolts can see still be on. A little bit. <laughs> Finished just in time. <laughs> Not in a good way. Attack the mage, not me, come on. I, I, I'm undead like you. Whose side are you on? Not mine, that makes sense. Looks like there's a nemesis over there. Looking forward to that. Get a new set. All right. More questions. Please don't forget to put at last epoch game in the question. So I know that you want me to answer it. In your opinion, what is the strongest and weakest aspect of the game? Oh. That's so hard to answer. Uh. Strongest. Okay, so let's, let's let's start let's start with weakest. Cause I think it's actually easier for me to do. <laughs> um, I think the weakest aspect of the game is probably in our uh, like limited procedural generation. I think that's the I think that's holding us back the most right now. Um, and it's something we're actively working on. So like, the stuff that I think is our weakest are the things we're working on. <laughs> like uh. Uh, performance and probably like just overall the entire game performance and stability is probably still um, it's it performance and stability is one of those things where if it's not almost perfect it's kind of terrible you know there's, there's, it, it goes from it's almost in a binary state not quite but almost and it feels that way sometimes I just doubled how that I did um strongest that's the hard one so there's a lot of things i love about the game i think probably like just the the skill system as a whole is probably the strongest element just this like having these having these skills um i think that's probably the strongest system overall i'm so biased though because i'm just talking to the things that i work on <laughs> As both strongest and weakest. Skeletons. So strong right now. <laughs> Ske 
intelligence is so strong right now. Oh, is this is this the the blue thing that we were talking about earlier? I think this is the blue thing. This is a question that was asked earlier. That axe actually might be useful. And really good look at it. Um, but these are the um, the Imperial Uprising event enemies. So yes, these are temporary. These are new. These will be going away. Yeah, that's what that is. Huge question, Mike. I love huge questions. Give me the huge questions. Uh, have you found the time to play the new Zelda Echoes of Wisdom game? I have not. I have it. Um, it's been sitting on my shelf. Uh, my wife is on a little trip right now. Um, I'm not going to play it without her. Uh, she wasn't a huge fan of uh, the Link, uh, Link, Link, uh, Link's Awakening remake. My, my wife is, uh, she she loves graphics in games. That's like one of the most important things. Like if a game's not pretty and like good graphics pretty, not like stylized, but like good graphics pretty, um, like traditionally high quality graphics, high fidelity graphics, there's a good way to put it. Um, she'll she'll like get, get bored of a game and put it down. It's gotta, it's gotta look great. Um, And so I'm a little concerned that the graphics aren't uh, like like realistic enough uh, for her to really enjoy it very much. She got a taste of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and just like can't go back to old Zeldas now at all. Except for Twilight Princess, she'll play that till the day she dies. And um So it's, I, I, I know she's not super hyped on it, but I kind of want to wait for her to play it. Uh, and I don't know when she's going to be interested in playing it. Resist necrotic damage. That's what's going on. I'm like, there's so much health. We still not have culling on Reaper form. I feel like that's a, a thing that like Reap should be a pretty staple for a Reaper on Reap. All right. Now that we have an easier time getting items in the stash tabs where we want them, might you make a button to instantly transfer all items in inventory to the stash? Hmm. Um, yeah, I can see that. I think there's, is there an issue there? I don't think there's an issue there. It might take a second. Might have, uh, there, there might be like a slight like spinner, like, like you, you hit it, it like, you know, does that like that animation there or. Like there's some sort of like, do, 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 it does them one at a time, and if you like close it partway through, it stops it or something like that. Maybe I don't know. Um, I'm I'm trying to think if there's if there's a like a big issue doing them like all at once. These I do I really want experimental items to have, uh, to be filterable in this. That's one thing I'm, I really want. Oh, I'm still holding this chest. It's kind of garbage. Really garbage. Yes. You know what I do want? Yes. Take care. Give me the shattering stones. All of the shattering stones. We're so close to the end. Okay. Uh, 
I missed! Oh my goodness, I missed so much stuff! <laughs> Did that not play a sound? Am I just crazy? <laughs> I think I got sucked up into the game. Thank you very much! Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, we, we had a raid. Um, and also, there's a 30-month resub from The Path. So thank you very much, that's incredible! We're like, wow, it's getting close to three years! Ugh. The threes right at the top is insane. I just saw it in the actual chat. Thank you very much. That's very cool. Glad to have you with us. Uh, character sheet, question mark. Yeah, it's enough to remind me. We're working on it still. Well, not actually actively working on it, but it's, it'll happen. All right. Does the design of the game and balance try to make all unique item based builds viable for the hardest content of the game? Mm. No. Um, sometimes it feels some like some unique are I think are a bit lackluster, or do you feel these unique just need time to work a build around? <sighs> there's there's too many unique items to have every single one of them be top tier end game viable. Uh, you know as as the balance of the game changes. Um, like new things get added, things get removed, you'll see items, unique items go in and out of favor. Like the previously undisputed best item in the game is now like never even talked about. Yeah, we nerfed it a couple times and it was still the undisputed best in the game. And then we nerfed it like four more times and it's still really good. Um, and so it's, it's, it is a tricky thing. Um, I think that there are a lot of uniques that are really great for builds that aren't being used because they're not the best. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that, like we we always try and increase the the vibe the number of things that are viable in endgame. Um, and part of the legendary system is to help with that, especially. Lizard IRL got to the rainy party, thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I must have said something crazy. <laughs> All right. What's your stance on features in other games? If you see some other game doing something well, would you try and incorporate it or rather avoid it? Um, we try really hard to like be our own game, do our own thing. I think rarely there are situations where um, you can you see you like you'll be playing another game uh, and like you'll experience something and go, oh my god, that's brilliant! Like, is is there is there a way you can incorporate that into a game? And it's it's kind of a trap to do that, I think, um, because. Individual game systems are almost always made uh, not in a vacuum, but rather uh, with every other game system in mind. And transplanting individual game systems from one game to another is, is I think, frequently just a bad idea. Because um, you end up in situations where it's maybe solving a problem, like it's a cool system and it's maybe solving a problem in one game that you don't have in your game, or you have other systems in your game that conflict with it and that it doesn't actually solve the problem in your game. So I think it's it's better to, um, to to look at it from the other the other side. Like if you have a problem in your game, something you need to solve, um, it's it's fine to like look at how other games have solved similar problems um, to get ideas on on how to solve it in your own game. But it's not it's it's not it's it's not okay to just copy things either. But like. I don't think you'll get very good results out of just copying things. So we really, we really try and avoid doing that whenever possible. Um, and that's, that's uh, the flip side of that. I think is also why, like, there's been a couple times where we've we've added things to the game, and like, um, other games have added similar things in very short time frames afterwards, and, and people were like, "Oh, they copied you or something." It's like, well, I mean, not really. I don't think so. Um, because either it happens so fast, you're like, you know they were thinking about it already. That's another thing that happens sometimes, too. Is we, we've definitely had a situation where we've cut a... Because you mentioned or avoid doing it in some cases because other games do it. We have cut a system before. 
because it showed up in another game like months before we were going to release it. And we're like, that's so close that it's going to look like we just copied it completely. Um, and I was a little disappointed that we checked it out and didn't do it. Um, Because even when they are independently developed, eh, it's not a great look. Especially when we're the smaller game, most of the time. So we do we do try and avoid things that are like direct copies. Um, but I don't think we've ever had a situation where we're like, Oh, hey, this game did that cool thing. Can we add that to our game? Sure, let's slap it in. I don't think we've ever had that. Yeah, I don't think we've ever done that. It's definitely, it's definitely a difficult situation to navigate. Next question, like, things are tanky. This is the one problem with playing Reaper form on, uh, on stream, is that I do have this, like, impetus to just, like, keep going. And I'm like, I, I want to I keep Reaper form up, but I want to look over at chat, but I want to keep Reaper form up. Here, we're gonna let reform drop. We're gonna pick these things up. We're gonna look at chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Thanks for the answers. You're welcome. I hope they were good answers. Reference timestamp 2 p.m., 20 minutes behind. Not terrible. Thank you very much, Kane. I appreciate that. You know what we're gonna do right now? Little tiny breather. I actually brought something to share with the class. Enough gum for everyone. Ta-da! It's a cool, it's appropriate for what we're fighting right now, too. I believe there's also uh, a, a, a person for scale over on this side. It big, it real big. Hey, Mike, are you planning to fix the moonwalking uh, skating character movement? This problem was fixed for two years ago. I don't think I. Did I think I said I loved it? Um, when you hold your mouse cursor on your character, skates around. Oh yeah, I'm well aware. I love it. Moonwalk, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to do it. I, I, it's been a while since I've put things on on screen, so you know I got to do it once every once every stream. There's a possibility that it may have been caught up in the WASD issues. That's kind of what I mean about tech debt. <laughs> Come on. That was a little close for comfort. That's okay. I think we have to do something about the double health idols. I don't have any, but... Like, move one of them onto a different idol type, or put them both on prefix or both on suffix. Something, because they're just too ubiquitous right now. Not bad. Yeah, this is better. Ooh, can we craft it all? Uh, fizz res. Oh, no, level 60. What's my lowest level? 53, it's probably my lowest level. 
Int, health, int, int is damage. Uh, 55 might let me craft something there. Necrotic damage, yes please. Uh, 56, you let me craft there, int? Yes please. Melee attack speed. Let's get some damage. Yes. Health or health? Let's pick health. And weapon. I think that actually will help more than coal. I should reroll. I should have rerolled the cold. Yeah, I want to get that off. Yeah, the weapon's not awesome. Uh, since D4 failed to add proper rune words, how would you go about adding in rune words in LE if you had to add a rune word type system? I mean, it would. I'd add. A, I'd add our legendary system. Yes, it is. Thank you, Ladak. I do not know what that's in reference to. <laughs> is the empowering of items with the harbinger influenced by the current corruption level of the map? No. Uh, any plan to revisit the base speed on older ability spells? When's the last time this has happened? Um, I mean, we don't go through every ability and say like, hey, let's talk, let's look at all the old skills and do this thing. We kind of tend to look at them more in a self-contained system. So like, we'll be like, hey, we're going through Sentinel right now. Um, and like, let's, let's look at like, we'll make a big change and let's look at how that affects everything. And we'll look at like Sentinel abilities or we'll look at specifically Paladin ability or something like that. Like we'll, we'll try and take a subset that's more of a clear, um, that, that play well as like, like play together and, and see how that feels and adjust it that way. So um, this has recently been done for Sentinel, um, aiming for 1.2. I just didn't even trigger that. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, it makes sense. Loot filter is medium strict. Uh oh, that means our weapon tab is full. I'm gonna fill out our W two forms here. Do rarity, uh, it's exalted type weapons. We should we probably just like split it into the two handed weapons on this one, and we could do one handed weapons on this one. Yes, quick reorganize. Sort, sort, lovely. That's how we do. We got enough, let's go. Any plans? I right, answered that. Uh, there's going to be an update where with the. Uh, is there going to be an update where materials auto get transferred? It's possible. Um, there's nothing specifically right now that we are like, there's, there's nothing that's specifically in the works that I can say like, Oh yeah, we've been talking about that or anything like that. Um, but you know, if you put it in the suggestions forums on our discord and various places that we take suggestions, it's always possible. I think for a long time, the, um, so there, there's kind of two main types, there's I guess three overall types of items or things that can drop from, from enemies. There's equipment, um, so like a sword or a helmet that can drop from enemies. 
Um, and then there's also this, uh, there, there's secondary items. Um, well, I guess let's, there, there, there's strictly resources items. So like, uh, we're, we're talking gold and um, keys, things that are um, fungible. You can stick them in a big stack and they all become the number in that stack. I know keys you can't stack right now, but they're all the same, so theoretically you could. Um, and then there's uh, like specific uh, non-equipment items that drop. So things like, in, in this case in the game right now, these are, these are things like uh, like runes and affix shards um, and there's a, there's a few other little things but that's that's the bulk of it really uh, and we didn't we don't really have anything else in that category right now um, that like that fits in that category you could you'd say there's things like um, something else that goes in, like lenses in uh, in COF um, And I think that there's, we're, we're starting to get to a critical mass of secondary drop items that are non, non equipment drop items that aren't strictly a resource, um, that we can kind of be a little bit more, we can lean things more towards being a resource that, that previously have taken up that spot in the, in the drop tables. So like. We, we, we relied heavily on uh, crafting materials to, to fill that to fill that void um, but as we get more things that fit in that category with with new systems they get introduced so like poe has this in spades because they've got a bajillion little um, things that uh, that drop for various different um, uh, uh, league, league mechanics that have happened over the years. Like you go just just level a character in in, in base Poe and you end up with um, a whole bunch of these exciting loot drops that are not um, that are not just like strictly gold equivalent. I know they don't really have gold. The analogy doesn't translate perfectly, but hopefully I'm making sense here. Um, so I think as time goes on, there's more of a case for, and as as we add more of these items that fit into this category, there's more of a case for suggesting them to go directly than there has been in the past. Master Sword 1291 41 months. My goodness. My goodness, that's that's incredible. That is wow. It's it's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And if anyone if anyone doesn't know anyone's new here, we do fully stream for charity on the channel, so all of all of the everything is the charity above my head. Um so I were allowed to have a banner that big, because it's for charity. Oh, uh, that was, that was a, uh, a few months ago now that those rules changed on Twitch, but I saw them coming in and I was like, oh no, this is terrible, we're going to have to restructure everything, and then, it, then it's like, except for charities, I'm like, oh, okay, great, we just do nothing. Alright, in regards to the X, the top right of the inventory window, which closes the window, any plans on making the X dodge the mouse? As it approaches, what? <laughs> like like this? Just be like, oh, and have the X like squeak away from you? No, I think it's hilarious though. I've seen things like there with UI trolls. You there's um, uh, there, there's there's some old game. Was it was it Kotor? Ah, uh, that might be wrong. There's some older. I don't. I say Kotor is an old old game. It's like, Ugh. um. Where you, it would be like enter enter your name for the game. Uh, so he's like, please enter something for your name. And if you type something, it was like it can't be something. Please pick anything else. And you write like anything else. It's like haha, very funny. Um, and it like it has like a conversation with you when you take it like way too literally. I really enjoy stuff like that. I 
I didn't even look to see if we want the necrotic damage. I'm like, we, we, we must be wanting the necrotic damage. Okay, yeah, we are. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I was like, it's gotta be going this way. Uh, da, 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 da. Area, yeah, we need a bigger area on this. We need a bigger area on this. It's only four. Okay, that's fine. Fine, fine. Armor shred, we'll take it. Bone armor chance on kill. It was, it was such a long time where bone armor was such a mangled uh, stat. <laughs> where there was like multiple sources of it, but they each did different things, and if you try to get them at the same time, it caused all sorts of problems. All right, let's go. Yeah. Give me that leech. Hi, Mike. Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Two questions, merch store update. Uh, nothing, sorry, would love to have better news for you. Don't have anything. Uh, secondly, will there be any updates to the MTX store before next cycle? To the MTX store itself? I don't know. I don't, I, I would say unlikely, but possible. Uh, can we make two-hand MTX apply to all two-hand weapon types? Unfortunately, the animator's a little tricky there, and it doesn't like doing that, the way we've got it set up. Um... I, I, I understand why you'd want it. It's 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 another one of those like it should be easy, right? Yeah. One head weapon MTX seem to apply to all base sites. They don't actually. It's just they have much more uh, similar animators that we can apply it across more things. I think there's a few that don't. Work. I think daggers might be an exception. Dagger one maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I was just I just want my four LP living hammer to be katana. <laughs> yeah. Um. It is it is tricky because like yeah I mean they, I mean it's a perfect example like you hold a two handed uh, big mace with like like this and katana like this or odachi in this case but still uh is a transmog system anywhere on your agenda right now Ellie's great good job thanks guys thank you very much um yes transmog system is on our radar at the moment um how exactly that's going to look I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, like, uh, skill NTX, improving our, uh, MTX that is available, adding more, um, um, more compatibility to those MTX items, um, making them available in more situations, um, what was this, transmog, yes, transmog system, like, all, all these things on, like, customizing the way your character looks and feels and plays is all really, really, really important to us. Um, and we are actively pursuing many different methods of uh, improving that in general. Transplants actually probably got some decent damage on it now that I got an necrotic damage. Not amazing, not terrible. Ooh, is there a... Was there a skatey boy back here that I missed? There's a purple one! That's what we like to see. I don't know who made this loot filter, but whoever it was, thank you. I like it a lot. I hope you're watching. I doubt you are. All right. Did you think of implementing keystone that every class could use? For example, uh, ward on mana or only something crazy like immune to elemental but takes double physical damage. Um, I mean, there's... 
so, so like kind of i would i would call them unique items though um because we don't have a shared passive tree if we did put um something that's like a passive node that's shared for everyone it would have to go on every tree individually and there kind of has to be a reason for it to go in the in that tree um so that's why if we're doing things like that we we we, we put them on uh, on items instead My god. Oh, the Volcanity. Oh, are you guys aware of any bug with Warpath and Echoes right now? I've been told they're doing more damage than they are supposed to. I do not have any extra information on the status of bugs. Um, I'm not actively working on one myself. Uh, technically, I'm not. Uh, technically, I'm, I'm not at work this week, anyways. So, um, if there's one that's being tracked, I'm head in the sand about it right now. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. Um, if you are suspecting there might be a bug that you may have found one, please use the in-game bug reporting tool. Boom! That easy. Um, bug or not, it's good to do. Okay, bug or not, hear me out. It's a gigantic bug. Like with 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 the helmet and everything. Let me call it the bug or not. You gonna spawn? Does she spawn up here? Oh, he spawns over there now. We'll take it. Love it. Hi, an immense fan of your game. Thank you. Uh, with long-term experience here, a hopefully small question, if you don't mind. Go on. Uh, could you please explain sex and blocking? Much obliged. I need to read ahead of these questions a little bit. <laughs> so whenever you're making up a new like uh, like a like a document that you're gonna be presenting to like a large audience or something like that, when when you're writing it up to like be printed out on like paper to have with you at like a podium or something like that, it's really good to just just like pull out one of your sextants, probably a smaller sextant that you've got in your drawer. I, I know you got lots. And you want to like put it, lay, lay it out on the page and draw like a little outline around it in a few spots. And that's going to block off sections of your page. So when you're writing your speech, you like wrap the words around those blocks that you've done from your sextant. And it's, it's going to just like have a really, really neat flow in, in how your words come out after that. Yeah. You make me like invent new ways to, to lie about what sextant blocking is. <laughs> Okay, boss fight. Here we go. Come back to the center. Uh, someone who likes to try and collect uh, or at least discover all the items in an ARPG. Grail question incoming! Love grail ideas. Um, but don't want to die and I'm not in reaper form. Uh, gotta catch them all. Would it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun to have an in-game index of legendary items where you can, uh, can see all possible legendary? Oh my goodness! <laughs> yes, this is this is a grill question. I love it. I love grill grill ideas. Come on, regen back up. Let's go. Oh, right into the slam, Mike. What are you doing? Okay, so close. OK, 
Okay, I can do this. I can answer this question. We can see all possible legendary items for each possible slot and make uh, them shadowy until you found it. We finished the question. Uh, experience. We just, we're just going to keep current. We like we like our current. There's another woven flesh. Ooh, an LP woven flesh. Don't see that every day. Normal. You know, it's not actually a bad thing to wear. It's just, it's all health. I need more damage. The crit in on this is nice. We don't really care about the cast speed or the mana regen. It's kind of like, is the health res crit int versus all the defensive stats? That woven flesh might be better. Go run, uh, go run Temporal Sanctum. We have a little bit of time. We just try and slam it on there, see what happens. Should we be reckless? Is this... Is, okay. Okay, you know, we get, we get a key from the boss. Let's go do it. Getting crazy up in here. Level 80? Will this even let us do this one? Oh, this might even let us do this one. <laughs> I didn't see what level it works up to. Uh, we'll find out. Um, yeah, sorry. A, gr a grail tracking system I would love to do. Um, the the big question with a grail tracking system is, does there's two main things. Does it show um, all of them that you've got ever? Does it, is it actually, is it like a system where it just like tracks the ones you've got and it's like, oh, you got this one, it unlocks and it shows the, the, the item and it's like a codex of details and like you can see the information about it like a, like a Pokedex with your gotta catch them all reference there. Or is it more of a like an actual item slot where you're filling in a specific item and you're saying, okay, well like, uh, like, like a coin, is it a coin collection or a, or a Pokedex um, system? I think is the, the... Is this what I think it is? Yeah, it's what I think it is. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure which one's better, but I would like to do one of them personally. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Uh, skating is the equivalent of running circles in town and wow, for me, you don't dare move it. Yeah, a person of culture, I see. I'm, sh I'm sh like, in all reality, it's one of those things where it's not meant to do it. It does look kind of janky. I'm sure we'll probably fix it at some point. Um, it's one of those things where I'm like, if I was making this game just for myself and no one else mattered, I'd probably leave it in. But I'm not. And everyone else does matter. So, yeah. Uh, any possibility of getting a class that uses guns like flintlock pistols or something? I'd love to. Um, it's, it's possible. It's not something that we are targeting right now. Um... I think there's a lot of room for additional class fantasies to be realized through um, more appropriate contemporary to the game period uh, items. So like um, you can do like there's crossbows, there's one handed crossbows, there's one handed spears, there's fist weapons. These are all things that are um, like really common. RPG and just RPG and fantasy game weapons that we don't have in the game yet and um, You know, I think I think we'd probably want to explore those things before we started exploring any sort of uh, Gun style weaponry um, But you know, it's, it's not like it's like there's some hard rule of like oh well no guns ever or anything like that
That was kind of risky. Uh, and it looks like we're maybe gonna not pay for it. So, reinforcing bad habits for the win! Oh, it liked the, the loot filter, liked that weapon. Not 100% sure why. Melee void damage is nice. Any plans for Halloween event? I don't think so. I think we're we're a little little close to Halloween to start thinking about that. There's a whole lot of other stuff happening in the space right now that I think we might want to just be like, you guys have the spotlight for a minute. Would be my guess as to why we didn't do the skeleton event near Halloween specifically. Uh, no. We're going. We're going. Ah. Yeah, troll dungeon. Ding, there it is. Ding, level up. Ding, level up. Okay. We're going for the other one, but I mean, if we're, it's going to give us a straight shot, we're going to take it. Oh, it's blue. Yeah, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> we're getting trolled so hard. Okay, we're going to make it. It's fine. That was funny. I like that. All right, next question. Do suggestions made here get retained or do they need to go in the regular suggestions channel? <laughs> I can't tell if trolling, so I'm going to just say it just in case. Suggestions made here do not get retained and they need to go in the regular suggestions channel, please. Because I don't write them down. They, 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 they like, you, you tell me and I hear them and everything and that's awesome. Um, I, I don't write anything down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I've kind of if there was a, if there was like an awesome suggestion at the start of the uh, of the stream I've completely forgotten it. Uh yeah, sorry. It's not it's not malicious, it's not intentional. I'm just too much going on. With the event coming to an end, the buff with favor gain and reputation gain made both CF and MG feel so much um smoother was level 12 COF at level 96, and with the entire cycle I had level 100, level 90 before level 12. Um, with the earlier cycle. Um, any plans on keeping the buffs? Um, I think, so we've we've been discussing this internally. Um, we actually had a big meeting about it yesterday. Uh, it's not, uh, th th there's no specific details on what's going to happen yet. Uh, the plan, as far as I know, the plan is still to remove them as was the original, like, you know, the original plan was to fi have it finish. It's still going to finish. Um, there's a lot, th there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we have the, going on behind the scenes that we have planned that we can't really talk about yet. Um, that makes the decision a lot more complicated in general. Um, there are certain things, there, there's certain things that I think are up for debate um, and certain things that are just like hard no in the what can carry over. Like, for example, the gold is coming down. That's that's definitely not carrying over. The gold buff is done at the end of the event. I can tell you that one for sure. Um, and that doesn't mean that any others are possibly staying or not, but just I can tell you that one for sure is done <laughs> no matter what. Um, but yeah, as, as far as I know right now, everything's done and, um, you know, like it, whether or not the system feels good in general is a different discussion than what's going to stay, I think. So, um, we're always looking to improve how the systems feel. Come on. 
Whoa, my hand is one off. That's the problem. Just hide that over there. We need to look closer. We just need a little bit more AoE range on our harvest ability, I think. I'll get some good damage in here. So we've got to be doing it. Escape is impossible. Escape is impossible. Oh, I dumped that in the worst spot possible. That was a huge mistake. Nailed it. Oh, right. I got rainbow edge last time I did this too. That's funny. Oh, more questions. Sorry, I got a little, little cut up there. I get, I get, I, I realized that I had, I only had one shot for that and uh, it was not going to go quietly. Ooh, harvest damage leads to his health. That's actually really nice. That's a big health affix just chilling there. I'm gonna try. <laughs> oh, Mike. Mike ruins Christmas. Mike, 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 Mike. What are you doing with your life? Come on. Get some, let's put something on these gloves. I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna, I'm gonna power answer some questions as soon as this is done. We're just, we're just putting something on these for fun. Crit chance, let's, put, let's try and put some crit chance in these gloves, right? Sure. Level that up. Oh, damage over time. Sure, why not? Can't believe I did that. Hey, endurance threshold. We're almost out of time. We're just gonna power wash some questions through here. I was wondering, does Unity have a visual scripting language similar to Blueprints in Unreal Engine? Also, how often do you use such a system? And what are the potential drawbacks of using it in a large game like Last Epoch? I think so. I don't know anything about it. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, we don't use it at all. Uh, the big drawbacks are that you end up with... A, generally, a system like that ends up with tiny inefficiencies here and there. Because if you know, um, if you know how your code is interacting with what's what's like happening in the game at the time you can make tiny optimizations so like a good example of this is is like the the most like trivial example of this is like in a sorting algorithm if you have a hundred numbers and it is literally the numbers one through a hundred and you're going to try and sort those you want to use a very different sorting algorithm than if you have a hundred numbers and it is the number 99 99 times and the number one one time those two it's still a hundred numbers and the sorting time should be roughly the same and if you use and and, and 
you can because if you know that your data is like almost all 99s and just a single one in there somewhere you can sort that so much faster because you know that about the information and frequently a lot of visual scripting languages will not know things like that and and you won't have the extra information and details in, in how your code is functioning to to make micro optimizations like that so it's it's generally better to in most cases, I'm using really lots of conditionals here because there's situations where it's really, really good and powerful to do. Um, but I, with with my very limited experience in using visual scripting languages or system scripting systems like that, not even languages almost. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know much about them to that would be my, my high level, almost zero experience take on them. Uh, all right. Will the Sentinel in patch 1.2 have any skills fully changed? Yes. <laughs> Uh, are we going to get an option for auto transferring crafting materials? I, I, I don't, we don't have one planned right now. Uh, can the rune of ascendance make items with legendary potential? Absolutely. Yes. Um, it does have a lower chance than with normal drops though. So like, um, if you're hunting for LP, the best thing to do is, you know, play the highest corruption you can targeting monoliths that have that as the drop nodes and, um, if you get rune of ascendance, use them. But you know, don't. I wouldn't put all your eggs in the rune of ascendance basket. Uh, Forge Road is feeling very locked out of a lot of space in this class. Getting some love in the future. Yes, similar chuckles to the one I just did on the Sentinel question. Uh, will lizards drop more rare crafting materials after the event? Will will blah, blah, will lizards drop this many crafting materials after the event compared to before lizards? We get like ten x as many rune of ascendance, for example. Um, nice time to the earlier question. I think that there's. Um, I'd like to see some uh, adjustment to how we, we're dropping so many crafting materials. I think there's room for like a a bundle of crafting materials. It's like some random number or something like that, and they like just goes into your, your. You don't know what they are until they transfer. Something like that to help clean up some of the ground loot a little bit. It is cool to get that big explosion that happens, um, and have them all just like vanish really quickly and get like. And and so yeah, I I think there's there's good and bad things about it, and we might be able, we've gone a little too far possibly, but I don't love the idea of taking back too much of it so we'll see what happens uh if there's gonna be a change it'll probably be in 1.2 not after the event but i'm not sure uh is crafting materials going to be automatically transfer the storage just like gold anytime soon well as like the eighth time that's been asked this this stream put it in the suggestions thread i don't know uh we have no plans for it right now one more quick question is there perhaps some more b related items potential builds that might pop up in the future releases maybe uh, there's nothing specific in the works right now that I can talk about, but uh, it's that's still something we, we still love bees, so maybe. Hey, Enigma, nice. Um, how do you feel about COF and MG when it comes to the UX of utilizing them currently? Uh, as the amount of friction, satisfaction, and overall experience when interacting with their mechanics, bizarre, and prophecies like um, like them, for example, when it comes to rolling prophecies, does it feel good currently, or would you guys like to maybe have it be harder, easier, faster, or slower to roll the specific prophecies you want? Um, that's a huge question for the end of the stream. Uh, I probably can't do it justice right now. I think that there's, uh, probably a couple spaces where there's a little unnecessary friction. Um, but we're, I think very close to the right level of friction. Like having having the the gravitas of going to this observatory and um, this like mystical and area to, to interact with the system, I think is really positive. Um, there is there is such a thing as too deterministic of a control over the system that uh, putting too much control in the rerolling system might do. Um, I think it's possible that some of the lenses could be. Um, combined or split into a system a different system because it might feel like people are uh like using lenses to block off certain activities they don't like and then they're not getting to use the lenses to try and target the certain things they like and that that might be too much of a direct competition and they may need to go in separate slots um these are all hypothetical maybes and i don't know what's but and and like with the bizarre needs um the, the bizarre ux is being worked on the ui ux and the bizarre is being improved um, it got better, but it's still got a long way to go to get even better. -er. Uh, yeah. Uh, could it be possible to get Glyph of Envy from Prophecies at maybe rank 9 or 12, just to make it easier to quickly get through Monolith if you have to grind the end boss in the Monolith? Um, I'd say this is 
a pretty unlikely thing uh, because you can't get Glisten Envy from the Bazaar. Um, I've had a number of crashes specifically related to DualSense controllers, whereas I've been uh, none with the Xbox controller. Is this documented issue? And if so, it since when it'll be addressed, I have no information on the status of bugs. Please use the bug reporting system um, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, are you planning or thinking of adding random map generated into the campaign? Uh, campaigning. Um, into the campaign specifically? Uh, maybe uh, the bulk of the campaign, like the vast majority of the campaign, we are con uh, continuing to plan to be um, fully uh, handcrafted. I can see us adding in um, side zones or specific individual events that are procedural because we are working on uh, procedural um, area generation um, specifically more for endgame content but incorporating it lightly into the campaign is possible um, uh, is there a way to tell why the uh, tell why type t t is there a way to tell why type of elites are in echoes for cof prophecies a oh, which which type of elites are in echoes for cof prophecies um there it's it's per timeline uh so there's like each timeline will have different types of enemies i don't have a list in front of me i'm sorry uh are you going to play mech warrior five clans i'm not never been a mech warrior fan i, I heard great things about the franchise but it just never grabbed me uh, can I use an exalted item to make a legendary in the temporal dungeon that is higher level than I can use? Uh, yes, but each you you you, you, ha you don't make the mistake I made. You do have to um, run a high enough level temporal sanctum to use a unique of a high enough level, and that's it. Oh, we got through all the questions. Sorry, Brown eighty seven. It, it just never it just never got me. All right, that'll about do it for us. I hope you had fun. I know I did. I'll be back same time, same place next week. Uh, hammering out more questions, playing more Last Epoch. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. That was a good stream, I really had fun. <laughs> I, uh, I always have fun on the streams, but like, I don't know, I don't like to say it. Go say hi to someone. Who's doing cool stuff? Always seeing you do cool stuff. I try my best, but it's never good enough. All right. That'll about do it for us. Drink lots of water. Get lots of sleep. See you guys next week.